Welcome, welcome everybody. Zach Cords here with RevZilla and this is Daily Rider, where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. Our guest today is the CB500X from Honda, not to be confused with the CB500F, also from Honda, not to be confused with the CBR500R, and there's a Rebel 500 in there somewhere. There are a lot of Honda 500s is the point. So on today's ride, we'll talk about how this bike separates itself from its 500cc siblings and how it fits into the greater motorcycling world in general. And with any luck, we'll have a little bit of fun. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Alrighty, everybody. Uh, before we get going here, a quick reminder that this episode of Daily Rider is brought to you in part by our friends at Rever. Rever is a mobile app that allows you to track your ride and then share that ride information along with photos with your friends and an online riding community. Download it for free at your app store of choice or to learn more, go to rever.co. Okie dokie. Honda CB500X. This is a 471cc parallel twin, 180 crank. We've talked about that. So the pistons go up and down opposite each other. Pretty basic chassis architecture. It's not a wildly expensive bike. And therefore the basic build of it is pretty simple. But I think Honda's done a pretty good job adapting this power plant and basic chassis to an adventuresome looking thing, if you ask me. As for those updates, the more prominent of them would be dual brake discs up front. Uh, they're slightly smaller, 296 mil, I think, instead of 1310, maybe. Dual discs is uh, quite an upgrade, you know, to twice the brake calipers up there, and I think stopping performance has improved because of it. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, the other big notable item is an upside down separate function fork on the 500X as well as some of the other CB500s. Uh, and then it got some other little stuff, some fuel injection stuff, a little bit of like changing the weight bias of the chassis a little bit. I think the spokes and the wheels are a little thinner. I kind of like the wheels. I think they're kind of handsome. Uh, like a linear spacing between all of the spokes. It's uh, got a got kind of a nice look to it. And yeah, aside from that, I don't know what else there is to say. I guess we could point out uh, these extra little holes here in the windshield mount. The windshield is adjustable, but you need tools. You got to take these off and then shift it to change the height of the windshield, which is a nice feature, I think, though it'd be cool if you could do it on the fly. But, uh, you know, like I said, not exactly a flagship or ultra uh, high-end product. So I can understand Honda cutting the corner there a little bit. I think we've covered all the stuff that we really need to talk about before we get going here. And it's kind of a sharp looking bike, I think. So yeah, let's fire it up. Oh, it's already sort of fired up there. It's a little two color um screen here three colors technically because it's got a little bit of red in there but uh anyway here we go yeah Brrr. 471 cc's of performance adventurous potential let's uh let's ride to work shall we all right What if we talk about some specs, like we often do in this part of the ride here? The CB500X price, I didn't even mention the price, usually I talk about that in the intro, sorry about that, $7,299, so $7,300 for CB500X. We'll talk a little bit more about how that compares to the rest of motorcycling later. The seat height is 32.8 inches and when the 4.7 gallon tank is full of gas, it weighed in on our scales at 437 pounds, which I only think is interesting because I think Honda claims 439. And that's a rare occurrence when the Daily Rider scales actually measure lower than what a manufacturer claims. But Honda is an honorable company, I suppose. So yeah, that's a quick run of the specs there. The ergonomics on the CB500X are very good. And by very good, I guess I mean very comfortable. It's an extremely neutral and upright riding position. No weight on your hands, kind of adventure light, you know? Not extreme in any way. And uh, just a super enjoyable and easy place to sit. And when you merge onto a highway like this and you need to check over your shoulder, there's just lots of room for your upper body to move. It's a great place to be. 
and we weren't able to do a stoplight test for the seat height to show you what kind of bend is in my knee. I have to say 32.8 inch seat height feels or sounds high to me. I think it feels lower than that practically just because the standover height is very reasonable on this bike and it's not particularly wide. But I think especially for a bike in the sort of intermediate to beginner side of the adventure world, very approachable. And as we merge onto the open road here, I can tell you that about this speed, actually, 50, 55 miles an hour is when I want to be in sixth gear, in top gear. Oh, we're slowing down again. Even 40, 45 miles an hour, I think it's really enjoyable in top gear, in sixth gear. So I find it's geared kind of low because I think the engine is really comfortable at this pace, 4,000, 4,500 RPM. It's totally happy. As you go 70, especially 75 or 80, you're pulling 6,500 RPM, something like that. And the bike only revs to 88 or something, nine maybe, I don't know, not that high. It's surprisingly close to maximum revs when you're traveling down the, the freeway of American speeds anyway. If you do spend time on the CB500X like this, you're bound to be pretty darn happy. I can't think of a lot of things that I don't like about the CB500X. The wind protection, I think you'll want to play with. If you own the bike, I would I would recommend you mess with it a little bit, either the, the height of the, of the stock shield or getting a shorter shield or something just different to fit your, your body type. I find the wind protection on this bike to be pretty good for me. It's just a little bit loud because it dumps the ribbon of protective air just at the chin bar of my helmet, so it makes it a little bit loud for me. But in general, it provides really nice wind protection and it's really comfortable. The seating position is good, like I said and the seat is nice and plush. I mean, I haven't spent more than a couple hours straight on the bike, to be fair. I haven't done like full long days, but it's a really pleasant and easy place to spend time, as it should be. So full marks to Honda there, as far as I'm concerned. The only other place I might warn some riders about the CB500X is if you're really tall, it's not a full-sized adventure bike really it doesn't have the really wide and open ergonomics of like a mid-size or a full-size adventure bike so if you're six two six four you might start feeling like your legs are a little bit cramped but uh, i don't know it's like hard for me to blame honda for that i think in general it's a super nice place to sit and if you're outside the sort of normal size of a human being then i think it's worth playing around with taller seats taller windscreens different handlebars if that suits you one thing I don't want to forget to mention is the dash in, in sort of direct sunlight. It's not quite direct right now, it's sort of coming from the side over here, but I think the, the contrast is nice and crisp and clean, especially when the, the dash is, uh, is lit with sunlight. When it's not, when you're riding into direct sunlight and you have a tinted shield on, I find the contrast to be a little underwhelming, which is kind of a shame. Again, reaching for, for nits to pick here because the bike is so darn competent, but just when I see the dash like this, it's so good. It makes me sad when it's not as good in other situations, I guess. On the topic of fuel mileage and range, you're liable to be pretty happy with both, I would say. My fuel numbers were mid 50s, 54, 56, something like that. But I think getting 60 plus is uh, not outside the realm of possibility at all. And with 4.7 gallons of gas on board, you got some pretty long legs, good good range, which uh, I really appreciate that Honda did that. You know, Honda could have just, they could have been a 3.7 gallon tank and Honda could have said, look at our adventure bike. Look, it can go off road with a 19 inch front wheel. But instead, to put a better part of five gallons on board and it gets good fuel mileage, it's great. Good stuff. God, this bike's good at this. Especially at this speed, especially at this speed. <laughs> 55 to 65 miles an hour is the sweet spot for the CB500X. If I owned one, I'd gear it up faux show. Sure. I'd, uh, I'd change the sprockets to get taller gearing. Anyway, back to the task at hand, the mirrors. Any guesses on the mirrors? Yeah, that's right, you guessed it. They're freaking awesome. They're really, really, really good. They're placed in kind of a nice, tidy spot. They're just, just a little bit above my hands but they're wide enough that I can see around what's behind me and they're dead smooth, despite the engine not being dead smooth. There's some sort of like annoying vibes, I think, from 180 crank parallel twins, especially at faster speeds. But even, uh, so I was complaining about 6,500 RPM, 
So let's go down to third gear. Now we're pulling 8,000 RPMs and my feet are tingling like crazy. <laughs> so is my, um, well, buttocks region. Uh, but the mirrors are still good. Not even, not even that buzzy when the, when the engine's buzzy. 6,000 RPM. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I love a well-engineered bike when it comes to stuff like that. What can I say? Alrighty, everybody. We've slowed down now to neighborhood pace. And we're going to go for our stop sign challenge. The old uh, <clears throat> zero mile per hour footless stop. And uh, I haven't done a lot of experimenting with the CB500X, but it seems to be a nice combination of a wide handlebar and a center of gravity that's not too tall, despite all that fuel sitting up there. Uh, so let's see how we do here. Hey, yep. Oh yeah, are you kidding me? <laughs> good one. Really good one there. Good job, little fella. In general, I find around town the CB500X very easy to ride, super communicative, light clutch pull as um, sort of beginner oriented bikes tend to have, especially from Japan. And I think there's not a lot to complain about, but if I was going to complain about one thing, it would be throttle response, which I find myself having to be pretty delicate with. Um, the the on-off throttle is just a little, a little herky-jerky. And I think, I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but I think that fueling and the fuel injection system was one of the things that was updated in 2022 on the CB500s. So I guess I'm a little disappointed to see that um, uh, that it, it's not like uh, a little bit smoother and more kind of huh, premium feeling. But, uh, you know, you get used to it. And the engine in general is, um, is plenty torquey and very, very polite uh, and easy to use in these situations. So it's um, pretty forgivable that uh, that the fueling is less than ideal. Alrighty. Oh my goodness. I'm doing, we're doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. I don't think we've missed a footless stop yet, everybody. You might notice that I've shifted from first to third a lot and I skipped second gear. That kind of goes along with my uh, too short gearing theory with this bike. One of these days we'll, we'll leave a stop in second gear and we'll see what that's like in case you care. But uh, I think that's, if I could have a second through seventh, I think that's what I would have instead of the, uh, <laughs> the way that it's set up now. All right, should we talk about the dash? Is it, a, is it a good time to do that? Interesting little, tiny little analog tachometer over here, uh, which is pretty easy to read. Big gear position indicator, I like that. Uh, speed here, clock at the top. Um, this is uh, some information you can cycle through. Uh, fuel mileage, fuel time, that kind of thing. And then uh, trip meters over here. Very simple um, dash, but uh, functional, which again, gotta appreciate. The thing I appreciate about adventure bikes in general too is the dash being mounted a little higher. You know, like the because the face and the and the front of the bike is is uh, sort of levered up a little bit because of the wind protection, because of the way that manufacturers want bikes to look. I find the dash placement is often just like quite you know prominent and and convenient, which I like as well. There we go, and we're off, everybody. Ah, wide open. <laughs> uh, not an insane rush of power from uh, the old 471cc Honda Twin, but certainly enough to get you where you're going, that's for sure. All right, final stop sign in the stop sign challenge. We haven't missed one yet. Ali, oop, got it. That's a perfect score, I believe, for the uh, CB500X which approximates my feelings for the round town manners and balance that this bike has and demonstrates. It's an awfully agreeable get arounder and commuter. Alrighty, lover's lane. And this would be a great date bike as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Whether you're taking a long trip or a short trip, passenger accommodations are very similar to the rider accommodations in so much as the seat's pretty wide, pretty comfortable, maybe not quite as thick the padding back there as it is in the rider seat, but reasonable enough. And there's a small step up there, so there's a little bit of a perch, big grab handles there, just sort of designed with practicality in mind, like much of the rest of the bike. And it's thoughtful and pretty well done, in my opinion.
Okie McDokie, time for some twisty roads on the old CB500X. You've heard me say this 100,000 times before. The upright riding position, the wide handlebar, the no weight on your hands, I just think it makes for such a pleasant and easy experience going through roads like this. It's fun and interesting without being tiring in, in the least. And the 19 inch front wheel is not something to be afraid of. If you want on-road performance, don't worry about that. An R1250 GS has a 19 inch front wheel and that bike is terrific on a set of twisty curves for a bunch of other reasons aside from the 19 inch front wheel, I will admit, but still the C500X is really competent and fun for stuff like this, I think. The downsides to this bike in terrain like this, I think the engine is like, it's just a little bit sedate, not as playful as, as I would like it to be. And the suspension is upgraded as we talked about to a certain extent, and it's totally adequate and fine, but it's not particularly adjustable and it's not made for, you know, tuning road going capability or off-road going capability at all. Frankly, you know, this is a gateway bike to many people and for many people, and therefore it's not meant to have every whiz bang and doodad available. So it's a simple machine <laughs> and it will provide simple pleasures. And if you want your pleasures to be complex, you might find yourself wanting a little bit. All right, out of the twisty roads onto surface streets. We can wind this sucker up. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Look out. I talked a lot about the Kawasaki Versus 650 on Daily Rider and in my life in general. And I think that in a lot of ways, the CB500X is a Versus 500, you know? It's unassuming, it's polite, it's versatile. It's a really foundationally good motorcycle. For some reason, with the Versus 650, I'm always just sort of struck with how capable it is. And it just seems like it's more than the sum of its parts. And the CB500X doesn't have that same ring to it. And maybe it's just because it has a little bit less power. Maybe it's because it doesn't fit me quite as well because it's a little smaller, but it doesn't have the same surprising elements that a Versus 650 does in my mind. But functionally and objectively and basically, it does have all the same things and it's really good for a lot of the same reasons. And I'm gonna hit this little root jump. You know, sometimes we hit the root jump on dirt bikes and stuff. It's not a dirt bike, but let's hit this little blast here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I weigh 200 pounds and I just blasted into a bump at 40 miles an hour or whatever. It's only got five point something inches of suspension travel, basically. 5.7 in the front and 5.3 in the back, maybe the other way around. The point is, it doesn't have a lot of suspension, but I didn't bottom it or anything. Maybe it does have some of that surprising elements that I was just talking about. I don't know. All right, red light, let's talk about brakes, shall we? Yeah, the brakes are good. I like the brakes. They're, um, they're, uh, they're better than they need to be. The, the previous setup with the single rotor was adequate in my mind. And I think this new setup is stronger. It also makes the bike look more purposeful, I think, to have two rotors up front. It looks good, it feels good. Honda deserves a tip of our collective Daily Rider cap for making the brakes good. Hey, oh, green light. Time to stop talking about brakes. So what about all those other Hondas anyway? Those other Honda 500s, right? The CB500F and the CBR500R and the Rebel 500, all those bikes. What, uh, you know, this bike obviously 19 inch front wheel and better wind protection than those bikes. Don't hit me, hospital van. Is it worth it? Do you actually want this bike instead of those bikes for any other reason or any reason at all? And uh, I think you do. I've long been a proponent of the CB500F, which is the sort of naked sport bike of the, of the group. I just think that bike is simple. I think the bang for the buck is great. I don't remember how much it costs. Uh, I'll put it on screen maybe. And I think it offers a lot of the same capability as this bike and arguably just about all of the capability of the CBR500R for less money, which I think is great. And I think the engine characteristic here with this 471cc 
parallel twin is not my favorite engine in the world, but I think it suits the 500F. That being said, I don't know which one I would take, but I'd be awfully tempted to splurge on the 500X. I like the wind protection. I like the capability and the versatility of it. It's pretty good. I definitely wouldn't get the CBR. Definitely not. Whatever that's worth. <laughs> So where does the CB500X fit into the world of motorcycling at large? Um, well, I called it a Versus 500, you know, and I think that's definitely true. Granted, a Kawasaki Versus has 17 inch front wheel, not a 19. It's still the basic place that the bike sits. It's significantly less size and kind of power and weight than a, a 650 adventure bike, like a V-Strom 650 or a Versus 650 or something like that. I would sooner take this bike off-road, I think, than either one of those bikes because it's lighter and smaller. But it's also a marked improvement and size up, I think, from something like a BMW G310GS or a Kawasaki Versus X300. It has more power, it has more stature. It just sort of feels more serious and more grown up, which I think is valuable. And it's always tough because you wanna talk about bikes in a certain class and have respect for what they're aiming for and I hate saying oh I just get the one with more power because I would get a Versus 650 for myself but I think there is value in this bike being smaller in being more approachable I think it's meaningful and I think it slots into an interesting place in the motorcycling world and I think people's confusion about where it fits in or why they would want it or why they should get something else is an indicator of how it's set just right <laughs> You know, if you think you want something bigger, then yeah, maybe you do. But I think you'd be surprised and pretty happy with the uh, capability of this bike. I said we were going to leave a stop sign in second gear, so let's see if we can get a full a stop. No, I screwed it up. We can uh, leave the stop sign in second gear. See, perfectly fine. That's the, if second gear was first gear, I'd be perfectly happy. All right, the adventure bike goes adventuring. It is pretty messy here still, but this is what this bike is all about. Let's go for it, shall we? I do not have waterproof boots on. Probably gonna screw myself up. Look at us go. No traction control. ABS is uh, pretty well calibrated in my opinion though. Yeah. <laughs> These tires that come on this uh, bike are not gonna be super good for like real slick mud but plenty good for a dirt road i think better than your average uh, street tires so that's another little uh nod to the capability of the cb 500 x oh yeah that's slimy that's slimy oop, 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 oop. it's an adventurous little machine i have jumped the bejesus out of this bike and it eventually bottoms out but uh but it's it's just it's so willing and, uh, and capable and able. Woo, that's deep. Whoa. Yeah, getting swayzy. Does it have enough power? If you can go through first, first gear power slides, that's pretty good, right? What more do you want? <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Hopefully, I splattered some mud on my CB500X so I'll be looking legit in the parking lot at work. Right, let's see if we can get a wheelie out of this thing. I haven't experimented with this yet. Second gear? We can do second gear? Ugh, maybe, let's say. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at it go. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, if I'd done a better job with the shift to third, we would have carried it out. All right. <laughs> oh, I love motorcycles. And this is a pretty darn good one. All right, last test. Can we back it in? Not really, but you can dump the clutch. <laughs> uh, you can't mess with ABS, um, but you can uh, slip the bejesus out of the clutch, which just about works. I would do it again going into the office here, but we got a big truck. We got to be careful. It's not exactly a hooligan bike, but it is a cool bike. That's for sure. Oh yeah, we got big stuff happening in the CTXP shop this morning. Big stuff. Stay tuned everybody. All right, U-turn um, test. We got two spaces, plus a little bit on the end there. And I think 
the CB500X is going to do a bang up job on the U-turn test. Here we go. We're going to go full lock to the left, feet up. Two spaces. Come on, buddy. You got it. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. 1.8 maybe? Nice. Very, very nice. It's a very capable and uh, and pleasing bike to use. It's not um, ultimately super duper sexy, although it's better looking all covered in mud, isn't it? Look at it. Yeah. And here's what I'll say about the CB500X. I don't remember the last time I got so many compliments on the way a bike looked. My wife said something. She was like, that bike's cool. I went and got my hair cut and the lady cuts my hair was like, wow, that's a really cool bike. I really like it. And uh, one other person, random stranger. It's funny because this is not a bike that motorcycle, true motorcyclists or whatever would think is, you know, the, the pinnacle of cool for any particular reason. But, but it's handsome. The green is good and it just works really, really well. And it doesn't sound particularly interesting, but uh, can be forgiven for that. What do we got here? Oh, I got like a little acorn or something jammed in the tire. Gnarly. All right. <laughs> I, like it all splattered. I feel like one of those guys in a Jeep Wrangler driving around Los Angeles with mud spotted on the side, just like, see, it can do the thing, man. Okay, now, time for some Instagram questions. Let's uh, rattle off a few here. First is from Tim's Times Tim, who asks, comparison with Triumph Tiger Sport 660 and Kawasaki Versus 650. So we talked about the Versus a little bit. The Tiger Sport 660 in some ways is more of the same comparison. The Tiger Sport 660 and the Versus 650 compared to this bike are bigger, faster, more capable as uh, sport touring bikes or, you know, as sort of sport bikes. I think they're, they're just like a little bit more big. <laughs> this bike is small and, and fun, but if your friends were on these two bikes, you'd find yourself like stretching a little bit, maybe going a little faster than you want to on the freeway, potentially stopping for gas more often. Although I think it has pretty good range compared to the Tiger Sport. You're just going to get a slightly more premium feel from uh, these bigger bikes here compared to the, the 500X, and you're going to get more weight and character out of the engine too. That triple is a really fun engine to use, whereas this one just kind of does, in my opinion. Next question is from Rob Fierro, who says, the most pertinent question in 2023, why should I buy this instead of waiting for an XL750 Transalp? And which one fills their respected intended role better? I haven't ridden a Transalp yet, so I can't really say, but I think the Transalp is going to feel a lot bigger and a lot more capable and more serious than this bike. The engine is a lot bigger. I think it's a 21-inch front wheel. It remains to be seen how kind of gnarly it is as an off-road bike. This one is not very. I think the Transalp will be largely a sport touring bike as well, but I think there's plenty of room in Honda's lineup between this and an Africa Twin uh, uh, for, for a bike to split the difference. And I think that's the idea with the Transalp. And I think that's what we'll see when I eventually hopefully ride one, <laughs> uh, although it has not been announced for the US yet. So stay tuned. Next question is also pertinent to this conversation a little bit. It's from Fuzz Arrow who asks, how does the CB500 sit next to the NC750 in the product line? Should Honda have both? And yeah, definitely. So the NC750 is a very different dynamic. It's a really low revving, lopy, large engine. The bike's heavy. It's got the front trunk thing going on. It's a totally different design. It feels very much like a city bike that's sort of dressed up as a quasi-adventure thing. This is sort of like almost an adventure bike. You know, it's got the bigger front wheel. It's got... Um, a platform at the very least that you could put a few little parts on or a full rally raid kit if you want to do it, whatever. The NC750 is very much a city bike. It's meant to be efficient and smooth and practical. This bike is definitely more toward adventure, not to mention being smaller, quite a bit lighter and a bit cheaper. So yeah, I think there's definitely room for both. I think they're, they might look similar, but they're actually pretty different experiences. Uh, one thing I want to point out right now, having talked about the CBR500R, having talked about the Versus 650 and uh, Tiger Sport 660, and having talked about the NC750X, our uh, common tread section of RevZilla.com has reviews on all these bikes. I wrote a review of the NC750, which will explain why that bike is dynamic and different than this one. Ari Henning wrote a comparison between the Tiger Sport 660 and the Versus 650, which is uh, quite a good read. It includes also the CF Moto Adventura 650 Adventura 
maybe it is. Uh, so three byte comparison, that was pretty good. And our uh, buddy Spencer Robert, producer of CTXP, wrote uh, an article about the CBR500R pretty recently. So uh, yeah, all that written content's out there explaining all of those bikes in more detail if you are interested. Okay, on to the final question here. This is from Engstrom FMX, who asked, if the CB500X was a weekend activity, besides being a motorcycle, what activity would it be, ranging from collecting stamps to base jumping? <laughs> this is a great question. Uh, I really like this one a lot. What, would, what weekend activity is this bike? Well, at the risk of being kind of boring, it's a nice hike with your family. <laughs> when you hike with your family, sometimes you have to like, sometimes you got to go a little slower through the, through the tricky sections of the hike. And uh, sometimes you got to take a water break when you don't want to. And you, uh, you know, maybe you wish you were hiking farther or that it was more difficult or farther from home or something like that. And uh, I think that that's what this bike is. It's an adventure, but it's adventure light. You know, and I don't mean to suggest that this bike doesn't have capability, it doesn't have fuel range, it doesn't have comfort, because it does. It just does not have the same amount of of sort of like ruggedness and capability as a full adventure bike, though it is plenty adventurous. So it's not like quite as boring as flying a kite by yourself, but it's not quite as exciting as I don't know, you know, like a full on action sport, I don't think. It's a tame a sedate, reasonable motorcycle. That's what these 500 Hondas are, all of them. And that's okay, because uh, if you add a little bit of spice, then what you're going to get is a very willing and capable companion. Okie dokie, everybody. Let's put this sucker on the Daily Rider leaderboard. Stick with me. Here we go. Okay, dokie, everybody. Here we are inside Revzilla West. We've got the big shop door open. The natural light is flooding in. Uh, also, there is a major CTXP project going on behind the camera here. I don't think I'm allowed to show you, sorry. Uh, but there's a GSX-R1000, and there's a Goldwing, and a lot of other stuff happening. <laughs> and we got a road trip planned. So stay tuned. It's gonna be exciting. <laughs> anyway, more to the point. Uh, Honda CB500X is in the hopper, ready to rumble here on the Daily Rider leaderboard as a refresher for what we got on the board right now. Top of the heap is the Suzuki SV650, then the Ducati Street Fighter V2 and a Kawasaki Ninja 4 Hundo. So the CB500X, as we talked about on the ride, is quite a competent, good motorcycle. It's just good. It's just good. It's a good bike, great bike. Where does it stack up, do you think, on the Daily Rider Leader? How do you think it stacks up to the Honda CBR1000 Triple RSP, huh? Quite a bit cheaper <laughs> and better as a Daily Rider, undeniably, though not as thrilling when you open the throttle, certainly. Uh, is the CB500X better than a Ninja 400? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Is it better than a Street Fighter V2 from Ducati? Pfft. It's more reasonable and more affordable and more comfortable and less sophisticated and less fast, but yeah, it's better. Is it better than a Suzuki SV650? <laughs> now we're really, this is so close. This is so close. I mean, in some ways it is, it's got wind protection. It's a slightly more upright, more comfortable. I don't think, actually, I think the seat height's a little higher on the CB500X, but SV is slightly more expensive. CB's got nice long leg, a pretty good fuel tank size and fuel capet. Sorry, can't do it, nope. SV650 stays on top of the leaderboard. The CB500X is a great bike and objectively, offers some more features, I think, and gives up fewer things on the spec chart. But ultimately, I'm going SV. It's just too good. It's too much fun. Got that smiley face there. Uh, it's got a punchy engine. Uh, it's a nice size. It's, it's approachable, but sporty and capable. And just do anything with that bike. Just do anything. Do anything. SV650 stays on top of the heap. Uh, is there anything else we can compare it to on the uh, old leaderboards here? Uh, you got your, um, ba -do -do -do. let's see here. Uh, we talked about the, oop, air compressor just kicked on. Bear with me, everybody. Um, we're gonna just, we're gonna shut that off really quick here. Yeah. You didn't catch a peek of what was going on. You know, you're not supposed to see what's going on in here. <laughs> um, so I mentioned the Honda CBR500R which I sort of said that I didn't like very much. That's not true. Great bike, uh, just not really sporty enough, I don't think. Um, CB500X would be way above that. 
Uh, we're talking Tenere 700, Yamaha MT-07. We're, we're in this neighborhood, I think. So that's pretty, pretty high up there. Um, Tiger Sport 660, maybe not, maybe, maybe up here. So yeah, in the top half of both leaderboards, I would say, historically, uh, very, very good motorcycle. Whether or not it's right for you, that's for you to decide. But hopefully, along this daily ride here, you learned a thing or two and you had some fun. I think I've used up enough of your time. Thanks so much for hanging out. See you next time on Daily Rider. Bye, everybody. All right, I've been at the stoplight long enough. I'm ready. We got a daily ride to complete here, people. Mr. Traffic Light. We got work to do. The people want to know. Thank you very much. There we go. And we're off, everybody.